Gentlemen, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is BSL Hasu League Round 16 Group B. Or anybody else, I, I, I need to figure... Is there like an official like greeting where it just includes everybody? Where it's like, welcome everyone? Aside from welcome everyone? Because there's like ladies and gentlemen and then the other pronouns in between and is it like, welcome, they... It doesn't matter. Everybody's welcome here to this cast. That is what you should know. That is the important bit. That everybody feels welcomed. Uh, upper left-hand corner, we got white starting as the red Protoss. Bottom right-hand corner, we got... DJ Immy, or did Jimmy, starting as the blue Protoss. A lot of Protoss this season in Hasu League, which feels like it has, it's kind of moved back to its stable state of a lot of Protoss. Uh, I do want to get back to, this is on Lobotomy once again. It's kind of a weird map, so I'm going to point it out really fast. So natural expansion, kind of a gap, no eggs, notably. Uh, low ground here, kind of a, honestly, multiple attack angles on a base that has less gas than usual out in that corner. You have this base in the corner that has 5,000 gas, but a ramp from the north in that small defense point. So close to reinforcement point, but kind of a wider attack angle into a smaller attack angle and like a little area up there. And then you have these bases bottom left. Honestly, this almost seems like easier to defend. Here bottom left, full 5,000 there. Minerals, uh, mineral only oddly there. And then it's a two player map with some ramps. The interesting feature here is it's just got this teeny little gap this is the natural engagement route, but just that teeny little space right there. Uh, big ramps leading up, or big mid areas leading up to ramps across the rest of the field. Getting back to previous uh, games and things that happened. So in the previous we uh, match, we had Monk, Monkey Toss against, uh, oops, going up against Byaxer, and he was going for a Forge plus one weapons rush. And I do want to comment that when you're dealing with just Dragoons, that doesn't do anything for you. So the the plus one weapons damage upgrades Dragoon damage from 20 to 22. At which point it still takes, so eight hits at 22 damage is 176 damage and Dragoons have a 180 hit points. So it still takes nine hits to kill a Dragoon with plus one weapons. Um, therefore, until Zealot Leg Speed becomes a thing, uh, or there's got to be some other factor that I'm not thinking about for plus one weapons. You really don't need to worry about that plus one weapons upgrade. Uh, as Dragoons still take, at least with plus one, I should go and do some uh, some study of all that. I mean, I've been casting long enough that I should, but point being, learned. Learn something new, I always love that. Uh, but point being, a plus one weapons attack rush, unless there's some sort of zealot aspect to it, I presume, is not... Uh, you might as well save your money and just build more Dragoons. Probe wandering around in the base. We got a Zealot holding the line. The Zealot got the kill on this side. I do want to say that of the people left in the field, it looks like Jumper withdrew. So out of the people around a 16, the strong players. So Jess is around. I haven't seen Jesse in a while. Good to see her playing again. Um, you got Jess, who's a strong player. You got White, who's a strong player. You got Fisheye, who's a contender. And then Do Life. And who am I missing? Byaxter actually looking pretty decent here and there. So I could see Do Life, Byaxter, uh, Tucson. Tucson's also a strong player. I could see any of those guys making their way to the final, but it, it's pretty open field aside from that. White doing a good job of microing this probe along and actually making confirming that that, first of all, confirming that third pylon was dropped, but also getting Eiffel of a range upgrade. In the meantime, he's going to go noticing, hey, you're not dropping, uh, making any movements to go one gate robo. And your third pylon's down. You're playing kind of maybe one gate expandish. Is Jimmy going to go one gate expand or is he going to drop his robotics to follow that? Robotics coming out late. So it does open up this opportunity for Dark Temple. That's a big advantage having that probe in there for such a long period of time is you can get a better read on the build orders. And in particular, see if that gateway tech or the, uh, the next tier tech is coming out a lot slower. Zealot marching very, very far afield right this second. Maybe to try to get eyes on the natural expansion. They might confirm that there's not a natural expansion there. But White doing a good job of selling this as though he is going to go for an expansion. He's already dropped the pylon in position. And he has a probe kind of waiting out there. Well, he's got to hold that probe back, though, to really sell it. Looks like he's not going to bother. And he's also not going two gate with this. He's just going to go one gate DT, which usually is like, okay, I'm not going for a killing maneuver. I'm going for I get my expansion up before you maneuver. And with losing that Zealot, he's going to go ahead and 
Kareem down to the natural expansion. He's up at least uh, a zealot, but he's got two. So he's going to go ahead and drop that expansion. He's got that Dark Templar, second Dark Templar queued up behind this. Forge to go ahead and getting a raid from someplace. Special thanks to whoever raided. Maybe 80s mullet, I'm going to predict, seeing that this is Lucky Noob. That might be my prediction. I do want to say for people that want to see real-time strategy extraordinaires, <clears throat> 80s mullet is in that category. Fun guy, great stream. Yep, it was in fact 80s mullet. Look at me and my prediction skills. Amazing caster ability. Anyway, Dark Templar, back to the game. Dark Templar making its way down. The Dragoons having trouble making their way single file, especially with those Zealots. With the inverted ramp, that just makes those Zealots at the closer position that much stronger. Special thanks to 80s Mullet, by the way. Everybody go follow him on Twitch if you haven't already. I presume everybody here already follows 80s Mullet. If not, what are you even doing in this space anymore? He's going to be amazing when uh, Stormgate comes out. Just wait. Remember the name! Dark Templar makes its way in. And we have no detection. We got a shield battery and nothing else. Do the probes even realize it? Now they do. Gas gone. They're huddling up to try to survive like bees wanting to swarm a hornet, but they can't even see the hornet. Emergency robotics facility. And so White gonna win it off one Dark Templar, it looks like. And he doesn't, yeah, he has no other. So he's trying to get that robotics and try to surround the robotics so it will build. This is not a good play. 12 workers remaining. And now the second Dark Templar in the base as well. But the damage has already been done. The Dark Templar going for an inverted ramp blockade. Massive amounts of damage here. No cannon, nothing. Honestly, DJ Emmy has an amazing name here, by the way, but this this is this is it. He can't even pull all the dragoons and go for a counterattack because he can't get up the ramp. So white in firm control right here. He's gonna get a Nexus kill off this potentially. And these aren't SCVs that can group up and and uh, repair the Nexus. That's just not going to happen. So as much as they want to sit back and get the observatory up, if they don't have a Nexus, yeah, they're trying to gather the resources rapidly so they can get a Nexus replanted. But, oof. That's all I have to say is oof. Yeah, there's the GG. All right. Easy win for white game one. Honestly, off some amazing probe micro in the start. So we will move on to game two. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.